So Essie Cup is a conservative pundit and also an author that we've had on the program before. She wrote a book called Losing Our Religion, in which she talks about how Christianity uh, or Christians are being persecuted in the country. However, when we had her on the show to give examples as to why they're being persecuted, she had no idea. So she ended up, she ended the interview by hanging up on us. Anyway, she recently wrote a, a column talking about how women should applaud Ann Romney for marrying rich. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's terrific. Because that's a difficult thing to do. Look, I'm not trying to make Ann Romney the bad person here, okay? I'm sure she's a lovely woman. The bad person here is someone as simple-minded as Essie Cup, okay? So I'll give you an example of what she says. First of all, she starts off her column uh, by calling herself a city-dwelling, hyper-educated, independent-thinking woman. That's the very first line in her column. Look, this is a go-to move for Essie. That, part of the reason that Anna brings up that uh, Christianity uh, conversation earlier is because she's an atheist, and so she goes, I'm an atheist, but I can see how Christians are really being persecuted and victimized in this country. Pay me, pay me, pay me, right? So she's like, oh, I am an independent, hyper-educated, uh, braggart woman. Uh, but now let me defend housewives and how they're uh, persecuted by feminists, etc., when they're the greatest thing on earth. Now, she continues to talk about how we should uh, applaud Anne Romney for marrying a rich man, and she says the following. But while liberal women may praise Anne for at least getting herself an education, where's the praise for Anne's best decision of all? To marry well. God's. <laughs> Awesome. Because that's the best decision she ever made in her life. Yeah. Getting an education, uh, getting a degree so she could be independent in case her husband decides to leave her or in case she becomes widowed, anything. God or, forbid those things happen. Or in just in case she wants to do something, you know, in her life outside of being a stay-at-home mom. There's nothing wrong with that, and if that's your life purpose, great, fantastic. But in case you want to do something, having an education might be helpful. But no, 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 that's irrelevant. No, no. Main goal, marry well. I like this Essie Cup because she's bringing us back to old school, 1955. What else did Betty Draper say? <laughs> so let's find out. She continues to say, uh, progressives like Hillary Rosen, who lambasted Ann Romney on economic issues for being a stay-at-home mom, would presumably prefer women to be dependent on the state for health care and housing. Right, because it's either one or the other, right? Women are such, you know, worthless beings that they have to either depend on a rich man or the government to make ends meet. They can't just be independent women who have careers and have a good, make a good living without help from anyone. No, no, you missed it. Essie Cub's an independent, strong, hyper-educated woman. Right. She's just saying that every other woman is totally dependent on men and is not, of course, as strong and brilliant as her. Right, exactly. Uh, she continues to write, but by marrying wealthy, Anne made a truly empowering decision that allowed her the freedom to do whatever she wanted. Yeah, I don't know why you don't continue to make empowering decisions for yourself like that. Anna, what are you wasting your time with a career for? Go, you know, marry well. That allows you to have the independence of sitting on your ass all day long on your couch with your five nannies. Now look, I'm not saying that's what stay-at-home moms do, but she's Essie Cup is praising Ann Romney for having the brilliance of marrying an incredibly rich guy, so she has the luxury of not having to do a damn thing. Now, Ann Romney lucked out, because it's quite obvious she's in love with her husband, he seems to be in love with her, he treats her well, from what we can tell, right? However, there are so many women out there who made the decision to be housewives, and then they regretted that decision. She continues, she says the following, uh, the feminists may wish otherwise, but little girls want stability and security, not state-sponsored welfare. For choosing a life partner who could give her that, Ann Romney is a great role model. Yes, that is a great role model, okay? If you are a young girl, you should look up to people who marry based on a man's wealth. Because that's empowering. Yeah, and God forbid you should be dependent on the government. Instead, you should be dependent on your husband. <laughs> That's it's conservative logic for you, man. And to me, the, uh, honestly, the, when she said little girls, that, so for some reason that grated on my nerves even more. Because you can imagine her sitting down with little girls and saying, no, 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 don't pay attention to women like Hillary Clinton or women who have made these incredible careers for themselves. Pay attention to people like Ann Romney who married very, very rich and also uh, has dancing dressage horses. <laughs> and, you know, it, I guess the thing that bothers me most is that in that theoretical speech she's having with that little girl, she's basically telling her, 
you're not worth that much. You as a person, how much can you accomplish? No, 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 not much, obviously. So go get a, a man who's worth something. Exactly. Right? I, I can't stand that. I love independence. I love the idea of a man and a woman being able to work together and contribute to the finances together. I think that's an important thing. That independence means a lot to me. So anyway, um, SE Cup uh, is not exactly the best role model for women. Um, in fact, let's see how far she got in her career and what she did in order to get as far as she did. Let's watch. We're just resting our dogs, yeah, aren't just, we? Just kicking it. Yeah, relax. <laughs> Um, Rick Santorum is very strong. Oh, hi. Oh, hey. How are you? I hear you're working on an album. Yes. How exciting. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Never been to Alaska. Fantastic. Are you going to bring your gun? You know, if I can shoot a caribou, yeah. <laughs> but can I, can I take a gun on a plane? Um, I can, I can tell you how to do it. Okay. All right, that's all I got, Andy. Seriously, that's all you got? OMG. You're not going to ask Bill anything? Oh, Bill? What's no, no, going on no, with you? Fine. I always forget about you. Hey, Legs, what you got for me? Oh, nothing. What's up? Ooh, and you I know, really have this is anymore. so unprofessional. I am never coming back here again. What's unprofessional is finishing your block with a minute left in your block, SD. It's not my legs on the desk? That's okay? <laughs> no, no, that's a whole other story. All right, back to you. All right. Hey, Gavin, I hear you and your brother own an awesome bar that I have never once gotten drunk oh, at. Oh, really? I'm trying not to make a comment about you having your legs up. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, look, forward to be, look forward to hitting on you after the show. Yes, Matt McCall and I went to the Bears-Eagles game last weekend, and Matt is a Philadelphia... Bears <laughs> and spanking sounds pretty gay to me, dude. Yeah. See you, legs. Giant of her name is Essie Cup, and she puts her legs on the table like that. And she, look, maybe she's just living by her own words. Maybe this whole TV pundit stuff is a way to uh, find a good, rich husband so she can put her legs up forever. You don't understand. She's a city dwelling, hyper educated, independent thinking woman who's clearly using her mind to get ahead.